Hello, welcome to another session of Made in Miami where we are interviewing entrepreneurs who are making it here in Miami. In this session of Made in Miami, you're in for a very special treat. I had the opportunity to moderate Melanie Fernandez of House of Lilacs with her very good friend, Tiffany Dominguez of Tawdry at the Coral Gables Chamber luncheon for Women's Business Networking. Take a listen and see why these two female entrepreneurs are making it big in Miami, going from their passion to a paycheck and to profits. I'll be back with you in a little bit. Like it was very 
very nice. It was wood, they were wooden gift boxes, they had flowers in them. And I remember looking at this, and as a lawyer, we did a lot of gifting, and I thought, well, why doesn't anyone do this here? And that's where sort of the light like, went off in my head, and I just started doing it. I, I left my job, I was selling at the time that I, that I loved, so there was money coming in, and I started Hustle by Luck. Um, that was about five years ago now, I, right after that I had both of my kids back to back, so it's been a really crazy journey, but along this, this whole time, about two years ago, I was only doing gift boxes, and I had a client come up to me and ask me if I would send, if I sent flowers, because I was sending gift boxes, right? So I guess in her mind, she's like, well, she can send flowers. And I looked at her and I was like, no, I, I don't do that, but, you know, I have these gift boxes. And then, I, it, people kept asking me, it was so strange, like, someone else came and asked me if I would do something, and she was like, you're good at this stuff, and I was like, well, okay. So I went, and I had a relationship with a flower distributor. And then I went back and I did even more research on this on this topic because I'm not a trained florist, so it was a little bit intimidating for me. But I at that point found this company in Australia that was doing these handheld bouquets for 35 Australian dollars, which was 40 dollars US dollars. And I said, well, this is amazing because this is a low price point, I and mean, I'm a millennial, so I don't want to spend a lot of money when I send to someone. Um, maybe I can make this a thing. So I said, okay, I can do this for you. I can do a bouquet, and it wasn't that intimidating. Well, fast forward, we are now a flower company. Um, <laughs> I do, I'm a self-taught florist. I love it. Um, people always ask me about it, you know, if I have like this elaborate romantic story with flowers. I don't, but I do love them. And I have done enough research, and I've worked with so many flowers over the past three years that I can tell you I probably know every single one out there. If I don't, please tell me, because I'd love to find it. Um, and so we're a flower company, Miami based, we deliver all across Miami, and we sell very organic, we sell very whimsical. We're known for our high end flowers, so I source from California, Oregon, Dutch, Japan sometimes. The more novelty I can get, the more, the more I love it, and I think that's what sets us apart. Um, and right now, we're very much immersed, I'm very active on social media, so if you've ever followed me, like, we talk a lot on social media. And then throughout this process, because people loved hearing us, we started doing workshops at the shop. So you can come in, you can take a flower workshop, you can host your own private workshop, which is huge. Um, and we just opened up our storefront. So that's where we're at. Let me ask you a quick question for both of you. How important is it to have a supportive spouse? Um, well. <laughs> I can say Tadri wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Javier. He's definitely my behind and secret weapon. He's not here today because he's out on a project. But he's as much as a Tadri girl, if you will, as I am. Because <laughs> um, he's in it. And I think that it's so you know, important. You have to be in line. I think in any career, right, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're so immersed in your career, they have to be involved in it too. You have to have that. Support and it goes both ways, right? And vice versa. And I think that's for what career you're in. I think it's for raising your children, whatever it may be. You have to be on the same page and support each other because um, without that, you don't have anything. Well, so my company's four years old, almost five, and I have a four year old and a three year old. So that should tell you how involved my spouse is. <laughs> because I, and my mom works. So I, I mean, he is like, he's, if I'm not there, he's there. Um, you know, we do have help, but I, my house of lilac is as much, probably as much my husband's as it is mine. Um, he never sends me flowers, obviously. Tell them they can send you jewelry. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I heard a little bit about how each of you took the lead. Tell me, what was the biggest challenge and how you overcame it in the business? How many go ahead and go first? Um, for me, my biggest challenge is probably, it has to do with expanding and hiring people. Um, delegating, I am a very natural, controlled, I mean, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so um, I, I started this business myself and it, one of the hardest parts was finding people to give tasks 
and trusting that they were going to do it 80% of what I would do it. And that's probably the most difficult part, right? Because I do everything and I'm, I'm in everything, but I do it 150% because it's mine. But finding people that could at least do a, a percentage of what I can do it, but do it well, was really hard for me to let go of. Yeah, personally. Okay. Um, I would say for me, the challenges don't stop. <laughs> But in, in a good way, I felt like what could be, and if you're not growing and expanding and challenging yourself, there's not, it's going to be constant. But at one point, what I thought was going to be really difficult, let's say, finally moving it, you know, I was obviously in my, my parents' garage to doing it in my second bedroom in my apartment, to finally getting my own spot at that time, I thought that that was a challenge to overcome. Um, but I think they're going to keep happening in different levels. I think you, and you can't let that fear stop you, right? Because you think, oh, when I have, um, and I'm sure I know Melanie feels this way too, like when I have a team of X or when I get an assistant or when this happens, then it will be easier. But it's not because that means you're growing and now new challenges come in. So I think it's all about continuing to face that challenge and to continue to overcome the obstacles. And I think it's nice to think like, Oh, it wasn't one particular thing, and then that's it, you're coasting. I feel like it's ongoing. Yeah, yeah. so I don't know if that answers that question, but that's how I interpret it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no response. So tell us a little bit, like, what's the future? What are you building? Um, so, just recently, as I'm trying to, like, gather my thoughts here, we're really honing down on not just making jewelry and accessories. I love to say we, anyone can make accessories, right? You can buy accessories or things from anywhere. We're all about jewelry with me. So our pieces are personalized. I have, for example, you know, my daughter and husband's initials on my wrist. I have my daughter's um, birth details, which side story on this. My team made this bracelet for me that has all of Sienna's details, like height, weight, exact time she was born. And they brought it to me to the hospital and I'm like, this is amazing. I've never been gifted tawdry. Now I know what it feels like and the joy that it can bring um, when you receive it. So everything tells a story and we're really about um, uplifting our customers, celebrating all the different milestones. So we do coordinates to celebrate a degree. We've done the words uh, fighter and survivor. We do jewelry for all different occasions and all different milestones. So what we're really focusing on is our customer and creating this brand for the Tawdry Girl. Um, we're well known, I mean, we have so much to do obviously in South Florida, but we're really focusing on a national level and focusing on different markets. So I've done a couple different speaking engagements in different key cities. Um, we're rolling out with some big national retailers, although we do direct to consumer. Um, and we're just really focusing on empowering women and focusing on our brand and having that relationship with the customer. We don't want to be transactional, right? We want to tell your stories. We want you to cherish these different important times in your life through our affordable jewelry, because that's something else that's very important to us. Everything's under the $100 mark. Um, we make everything ourselves, which I think is both something that's really cool and unique. We make everything right here at our showroom called the Jewelry Box. Um, we're an all-female team, so I love to say like we're women behind the brand, and there's actual hands. Nothing is machine made. So we're, you know, I have Grace here from my team. That's mom of two. I'm gonna get all. I express myself through emotion and my passion. Like, yeah, I get all like worked up. I get so excited. I, I have to like express myself through like emotion and tears because that's the way that I love. And I think you'll really see the passion behind what we do every day. So we're all like women, really. Hammering, I mean, you'll, you'll hear us down the hall. Hammering and crafting and creating all these beautiful accessories for our, our customers and for our chocolate girls. Um, so yeah, we're just really focusing on taking things to a national level um, as well. Awesome. Melanie, what are you building? What's the future of House of Lilac? So uh, I, when I founded the company, I, I always tell people I don't do weddings, um, you don't do flower weddings. And the reason behind that is because the everyday means so much to me, and sending flowers to people on an everyday basis is something that I think a lot of people are focus on. On that topic, we recently, um, as we, as I started sharing on Instagram, and as I started talking to people, and throughout the evolution of my journey, um, I, I left my job, I had my kids, I started this business, and I've been on a personal journey in terms.
terms of not being hard on myself, starting this business, hiring these women, and just empowering women throughout the process. So we recently created this, this membership program called Flower Club, and it, it, it's very much based on encouraging women on a monthly basis. Every single month, they get a monthly intention in the mail that is gonna ask them to get out of their comfort zone somehow and really make them feel 100% amazing in whatever stage of life they're in. Um, I think for me, in my experience, most women are so hard on themselves. You know, you're either working or in, in you're a mom and then you're trying to be all these things. You're trying to host, you're trying to be a wife, you're trying to be everything. And you can't, but you can feel 100% at what you're doing at that moment, whatever season of life you're in. So my goal with the, with the membership program, and we're taking it national, is to encourage women to feel just amazing where they're at. Um, and then that, there's so many other perks that come with the program, obviously there's flower works, but we have a ton of amazing content. Um, I spoke about us having content, but we have an amazing portal on Vimeo that includes, everything is quick because no one has time to do anything that's longer than 15 minutes, trust me. So it's quick tips on making a quick cheese board if you're gonna have people over your house. Making a quick cake. I mean, it's not, you're not gonna spend two hours on this, you probably don't have time, there's really things going on. So our goal is to really just empower women to feel like they're, they're doing what they can, you know, to their capacity at that moment in time, and not be hard on themselves. Tell us how come you chose the name Hustle Wild? God, I don't have a cute story about it, but... Um, <laughs> So, I, I mean, for me, I have found that when I get out of my comfort zone, 
and that's where I see like a lot of change happen and a lot of like a different amazing things will start to sort of like start brewing. So that's our challenge. What's your challenge? Oh, mine is on my faith with God. It's okay. a different, yeah. yeah. It's up in my faith. <laughs> Everyone's is different. So I know someone who, Carmen, that works for me. Yeah. Hers is um, making eye contact with people. Yes. It makes her I don't know if you all caught this, but did you see the two of them and how they collaborated in a moment? No. no. That's the power of being in community. And so I just want to thank the both of you for being here, for sharing your journey and your insights and uh, the power that you're bringing to women and to uh, our world. So thank you very much. I believe you can see from this interview how powerful it is that these two women are following their passion and absolutely making it in Miami. If you enjoyed this video, please like us, follow us, and share it. We'll see you again very soon for another episode of Made in Miami.